Hardcore Classic WoW has pretty much taken over the Classic WoW scene, and like many people, my first reaction to hearing about Hardcore Classic WoW was, wait, why would you want to do this? It just seems so counterintuitive that an MMO where your character can die if you just die one time. And it's only after I actually started playing did I actually get Hardcore Classic WoW. This is playing a new game. The game feels different. It's only after starting playing Hardcore Classic did it actually click why this is so fun. And with official Hardcore Classic servers on the horizon, maybe this video will convince you to try it out yourself, so here are 5 reasons you should try Hardcore Classic WoW. So first is the Professions Meta. Now it's fair to say in Classic WoW that professions really don't matter until you hit max level. Then you'll have like some end game recipe that actually defines your profession and gives you an avenue for making gold. In Hardcore Classic WoW, professions are a super big deal. Considering the limitations on how you can acquire gear and the necessity to survive, the choice that you make in professions is a super big deal. You can't use the auction house and you can't spam dungeons, so you have to find items yourself or craft them. You can pick a profession to craft gear and get a big advantage in terms of stats and armor, like a caster with tailoring is a super big improvement, however there are some tangible benefits to consider when it comes to picking other professions. In my case, I picked engineering, which gives you a massive improvement to your survivability with the target dummies that you can craft. These are essentially items that taunt enemies around you. It basically gives you a get out of jail free card when you use one. If you're super low on health and mana and you're about to die, dropping a target dummy and running away can literally save your character. So although I didn't take tailoring and I didn't get the stat benefits from crafting, you know, green pieces of gear, I do have the target dummies, which is a super big improvement to my survivability. Now you would never ever make this calculation in your head if you're playing regular classic WoW. It's only in hardcore classic WoW do you start weighing up your options like this in terms of professions, because they actually matter. The professions meta even progresses and gets kind of weird near the end game. Just like how nobody really worried about target dummies up till now, now they're super useful, there are weird things in the end game like alchemists being able to craft petrification potions, which literally saves them using the trick where you get sent back to your home city, basically acting as a bubble half. So the professions meta is actually really unique in Hardcore Classic WoW and really flips things on its head. You also find yourself leveling up things like cooking and fishing just to get the stat bonuses that you probably would have never considered up until you played Hardcore Classic. I know for my sake, like I never even worried about cooking until I started playing Hardcore Classic where that little stamina and spirit buff actually became relevant enough to try and get. Another thing with Hardcore Classic is that it's fun in failure. Now the prospect of deleting your character when you die is kind of crazy. But there are things to make this a bit more fun. As a consolation prize, when you die and have the add-on which everybody else is using has installed, they actually get displayed your character's death. So if you die in game, typically people will type F in chat to pay their respects to your character dying. Like the guild that I joined, there's just constantly people typing F in chat when players die. If you're streaming the game, now when you die in a stupid, unfair way, other people get to watch it, which is kind of a unique experience because having a bunch of streamers and YouTubers react to your character dying is kind of novel and fun in its own right. Like if you die to some stupid BS, that character's death actually meant something and gets immortalized in the content farms of YouTube and Twitch, which is kind of cool. It's like that character death meant something. And when a level 60 dies on the server, it's a big deal, everybody in world chat types F and that character gets recognized as an unfortunate casualty. Another thing is leveling is fun. So I've always argued that the leveling process in Classic WoW in the early game is actually super enjoyable. Despite it not having as many flashy elements as Retail WoW, the core gameplay of the leveling up process in Classic WoW is super satisfying. But when you combine that with the tension of only having one character death and then your character's gone makes you pay attention and you don't tend to zone out as you do when you're playing regular classic WoW. You're always a bit on edge, like you've always
always got your eyes opened and you got your potions hotkeyed, you got your bandages, like you're stocked up. You're a bit more engaged and turned on instead of just kind of sleeping through the content. Every green item that drops is a event. It's an accomplishment. You got some nice green item and you just hope that the stats help your class out. Every time you level up and get access to a new spell, it's just so enjoyable. The leveling up process is the content of Hardcore Classic. As opposed to just slogging through it, get to the end game where you can now raid, a lot of people actually level up Hardcore Classic characters to 60 and then don't raid because the content was the leveling. You start out with the fun thing, which is unique to Hardcore Classic. Another point is that there is a new meta. So you've played Classic WoW, you've played your class, you know pretty much the cookie cutter build that you're going to take and what stats to prioritize. Now anybody that's played Classic WoW will go through this process and kind of just do it by muscle memory. If you've played a rogue, you know that you go into combat. And when we're talking about hardcore classic and the priority becomes survival, now the meta has changed. You could do the cookie cutter build for leveling up a rogue, absolutely. But what about the subtlety tree? which has a bunch of options to help you survive and escape danger. Do you go down the subtlety tree? Because there are a bunch of things in the subtlety tree that doesn't make killing enemies faster. It's not gonna increase your DPS, but they do give you an expanded toolkit when it comes to escaping danger. For example, the preparation talent for rogues isn't useful in the sense that it will increase your DPS and make leveling faster. But what it does do is give you a reset on all of your cooldowns that can massively increase your chance of survival when in a sticky situation. Walking around the world with two vanishes is kind of a big deal, but also so two sprints, two evasions, you can double up on any of your cooldowns. And getting preparation at the cost of reducing your DPS might make the difference between your character dying and surviving. So now the meta is a bit different. The priority is now on survival. And in the context of my mage, yeah, I'm gonna be looking out for intellect and stamina gear and not spell damage gear. Although spell damage gear is nice, having more stamina and intellect can make the difference between my character living or dying. So now I'm prioritizing different stats. I'm going to look around your talent trees and look at the talents that you wouldn't otherwise get and you'd think maybe this could help me out where you would never even consider that build before. Shaking up the meta like this with having survival as the priority really gives a new spin on World of Warcraft Classic. The last and probably the most important aspect to this is that there is no easy mode. So in Classic WoW, there are a bunch of shortcuts to get to the end destination of level 60. In Classic WoW, there was the arguably cheaty aspect of leveling up, which is you basically pay a mage to AOE farm in a dungeon and you get like an absurd amount of experience per hour, like literally four to five times what you would get leveling up in the open world. So if you're making an alt and you have a main character to fund your alt, you're pretty much going to get a mage to boost you up the levels and that's boring. Yeah, you're leveling up faster, but it's totally boring. But in Hardcore Classic, there are no easy mode options like this. You have to go out in the open world, you have to quest. You can't just cheese the leveling content. And that's really important, because even if you like leveling up in Classic well, if you have a main already with a bunch of gold to send to your new character, even if you enjoy the leveling content, you're gonna be really tempted to just send some gold over and pay for mage AOE boosting and just skip past vast amounts of the content because the focus is on getting a level 60 and doing raiding. But you don't have that easy option. You are playing the hard mode just like everybody else is. And these restrictions that are in the hardcore classic rules at first I didn't really understand why they were in, but after playing, now I get it. It's to remove the easy mode option and make you play the game in a legit way. But it's not just making you play the game in a legit way. All of these rules that are in Hardcore Classic basically turn WoW from a cool MMO to a cool survival MMO. If you want to buy your skills, you better make some silver and gold. If you want to get some bags, you better hope you find some. If you want to get a mount, oh, you better believe you're gonna be farming some beasts and Stranglethorn Vale for the great items to sell. The point being here is restrictions like not being able to trade with other players seems kind of annoying, but it definitely transforms the feeling of the game. You've got more of a survival aspect. You're like this little dude 
just scavenging around the world and trying to find any way to eke out an advantage and get some piece of gear or get some bag and all of this feeling gets completely diminished if you're playing on a classic era server where you could just send the 100 gold to buy a mount and bob's your uncle well guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you enjoyed drop a like and sub for more